Hello friends, welcome back. My name's Ramon, how are you today? If you haven't seen my last Fenty Friday, I was talking about my initial first week impressions on the Fenty Skin launch, which I finally got my hands on. And today we're gonna be talking a little bit more in depth about a specific product, and it's going to be the Fenty Hydrovisor Invisible Moisturizing Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Sunscreen. In the first launch, right off the get-go, highlighting the importance of the role of sunscreen in the most basic of skincare routines, Rihanna gave us a sunscreen. She gave us a two-in-one moisturizing sunscreen, SPF 30, which would be universal to use for all skin tones, give no flashback, prep the skin perfectly for makeup, but as with all sunscreens, is there a remote recommended? We're gonna find out. Before I get into it, I'm gonna actually hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I post more sunscreen or fancy related content. Give this video a thumbs up and down below, did you get your hands on this? Did you try it out? What did you think? So as with all of my sunscreen reviews, I'm gonna be going off a specific rubric to kind of talk about the sunscreen experience, what I thought about it. I'm gonna be using the five Fs for this for my chemical sunscreen filters, and that's going to be the feel, the finish, the filters, the formulation, the foundation wear. And also with this one, we're gonna be talking about the fragrance this time around, a new addition for this one specifically. I've been testing this for a minute, wearing it for a little while, kind of playing around with it. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about how it applies with the way that I like to use it, how it wears with makeup, and then most importantly, how it reapplies applies on itself on top of makeup just because with sunscreens especially this one you really want to focus on reapplication just to make sure you're having proper and effective uv protection all throughout the day before we get into it i want to read the online claims it's a two-in-one moisturizer and sunscreen that's lightweight oil-free and truly invisible and on skin tones it claps back at dehydration discoloration dark spots and that's due to the formulation which i'm going to get to it's makeup friendly too no pilling and zero flashback what i love about this specifically and what i'm really trying to hype up is that rihanna is really highlighting the importance and the necessity to have sunscreen all day every day all skin tones no matter what season it is no matter what the weather is you need to always wear sunscreen it's important to protect your skin spf 30 protection the pink tinted cream applies invisibly on all skin tones plays over makeup boosts and brightens skins two making pores fine lines and wrinkles less visible instantly and over time the plush texture and fresh desert melon scent will make you want to apply every day and it's also sleek refillable packaging, which I'll get to as well. And basically nothing to highlight is that this is an organic sunscreen and KA a chemical sunscreen here in the US that is made with reef safe sunscreen filters. It's non-comedogenic. It's gonna sit light on the skin without clogging pores and the packaging is eco-friendly. The outer shell of this, it's plastic that is refillable. And then basically what you buy afterwards is the refillable packaging. It's 35 for the set brand new and then $30 for the refill by itself. So my experience with the sunscreen. Again, we're going off the five Fs for this. The feel of this. As you can see in the application footage, it pumps out into really nice lightweight gel texture. And again, I put on a really, really generous amount of this. I apply it very liberally, but the lightweight gel texture, because it is so lightweight, it just sinks into the skin. It doesn't leave me greasy. And the texture of it is so elegant, it actually makes me want to wear it. Going on to the finish of this, it's dewy, you're radiant, but it's not, again, greasy. And the thing is, once you leave it on for a few minutes, whenever I put sunscreen on, I give it about a five minute time to set in, the radiance diminishes slightly, so you get a natural radiant finish without, again, being too greasy. It looks like you put on a really nice amount of moisturizer. So let's get into the filters of this. So once again, the filters for this are organic, aka chemical filters. It utilizes three UV filters, avobenzone, which is gonna give you the UVA protection in this, and you have octosalate and homosalate, which together provide you the UVB protection, and that is what the SPF is measuring. That is SPF 30 is a factor of the UVB protection that a sunscreen offers. That 30 just means how many times longer you can go out in the sun without getting burnt when you wear an adequate amount. This offers broad spectrum protection and that's factoring in the UVA protection you get from the Evo Ben zone. My tea with that. And I have to give Fenty a little bit of slack because they are formulating this for US audience. In the US, the FDA restricts the UV filters we're able to use for sunscreens. And so we're a little bit behind than what the EU, the UK, and Asia allows for UV filters. Our chemical sunscreen filters are not the most elegant. They can be kind of irritating to people. And so Fenty had to work with what they could. Avobenzone, homosalate, octosylate aren't really stable in themselves. Paired together, they kind of work to fortify each other a little bit. There's also nothing in the formulation that really is working to fortify and boost UV protection and really stabilize that. You do have some antioxidant benefits and some other stuff in the formulation that helps to kind of fortify the UV protection, but nothing is really stabilizing the already unstable UV filters. In other countries, for example, you compare all of these unstable filters with a really stable broad spectrum filter like Tinosorb to really do wonders to stabilize the whole sunscreen formulation. We don't got that here in the States. Again, with all the Fenty Skin products, everything was meant to be two in one. So this is a moisturizer and an SPF. So beyond just the standard sunscreen filters, you have a lot of ingredients that are going to be nourishing and conditioning to the skin. And that was the big hype for the Fenty Skin launch was that there was a lot of things that Rihanna was using to really add antioxidant benefits, moisturizing benefits, hydrating benefits, soothing benefits. So for this one specifically, you have the Kalahari Melon, which is going to be jam-packed with antioxidants and vitamins, but also have a hydrating kick to it. You have Hyaluronic Acid and Aloe, both of them really great humectant ingredients. Aloe is also a really great soothing anti-inflammatory ingredient, which think about when you get sunburned, 
what do you put on your skin? Aloe. You have baobab, which is going to hydrate and condition the skin while offering antioxidant benefits and also anti-inflammatory benefits as well. Gluconolactone. So this is going back to the fact that it's supposed to help brighten the skin and help to even out the complexion. That is a PHA, which is a very, 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 very gentle acid exfoliant. It's a lot more gentle to the skin than alpha hydroxy acid. So that in itself is going to help with a little bit of surface exfoliation. That is paired with niacinamide. And niacinamide is one of those gold standard skincare ingredients that does a lot to benefit the skin. It's going to help refine pore texture, help to really reduce redness and inflammation in the skin, soothe the skin, it's going to help to protect and kind of reinforce the skin barrier. It does a lot for the skin. So those two together are going to do a lot for the complexion in itself. You also have an ingredient called Buchu, and that's going to be the ingredient that's going to help with sebum production, shine throughout the day. It's going to help to keep your shine at bay while the hydrating ingredients Moisturizing ingredients are going to help to keep you really radiant and dewy. So it's going to help to balance things out. And along with the Kalahari melon antioxidants, you also have tocopherol and tocopherol acetate, which are both vitamin E derivatives. And they're going to help to, again, give more antioxidant benefits to the sunscreen. Vitamin E is going to help to be a UV booster, as well as having other ingredients to help to condition the skin as well. So formulation wise, there's a lot of really good skin benefiting ingredients to help condition the skin, soften the skin, give hydration and moisture to the skin. So it really is satisfying the role of being a great moisturizer for the daytime. Here's a tea on this. She also really recommends it for a nighttime moisturizer. This is the only moisturizing product that she launched. I'm not gonna use this at night. There's a couple reasons for that. Kind of going off a little bit of the formulation stuff. One thing I like to add is that with sunscreens, I do mention the antioxidants that are in this. This pairs amazingly with the fat water. This is going to help hydrate the skin and offer other antioxidant benefits as well, especially with the acerola, AKA Bajan cherry. Those antioxidants are gonna, again, boost the properties of this, and this is going to help lock in the hydration that this gives your skin. So this is a powerhouse combo for pretty much all skin types, dry skin types, dehydrated skin types, oily skin types. These work great together. And the last one I wanna get to is foundation wear. So again, this talks about prepping your skin beautifully for makeup, no pilling, no textural issues, and I can 100% vouch for that. Again, I put a lot of this on, which I'll get to in a second. I lather on a full layer, let it sit in for five minutes, and it leaves my skin nourished, moisturized, prepped amazingly for makeup. My go-tos with the Fenty Beauty products are the Soft Matte Primer and the Soft Matte Foundation mixed together, and that's a matte combo. This underneath those just gives a really nice radiance to the look, while the foundation and primer help control shine and oil throughout the day. So together, it's a really great combination for a healthy glow while you still have oily skin. I imagine these would get great with the hydrating foundation as well if you have more dry skin. But what really astounded me was the fact that I could buff on top of it without any risk of products moving underneath it, any pilling, any weird texture issues. My foundation set on my skin. Beautiful. Look at this. And this is with reapplication on top of the foundation too. So, and the last thing I'm going to cover for this, the sixth F, which I'm including for this video is fragrance. And everyone knows that when Fenty Skin launched, the big T was the smell. I love it. First and foremost, I love the smell of this. This specifically, she talks about how it has that melony smell to it, the desert melon smell. To me, this smells like candy Skittles. When I first smelled this, perfume and fragrance didn't hit my mind. What hit my mind was like fresh tropical fruit, Caribbean getaway, like very tropical island smells. And that's attributed, I don't know to what specific ingredients, but it creates for a really nice like sensory experience. When I kiss my boyfriend, the smell of this is intense. It smells, it lingers, but when I kiss him throughout the day, I still smell it on him and it's, it's fun to smell that while I'm kissing him. On top of that, today with the makeup on it, I was like, what does my face smell like? And he's like, I can still smell it even with the makeup on top of it. Something to factor in, I like the smell of it though. I've had no adverse reactions to this though. I like fragrance in my skincare though. My skin reacts nicely to it, but I do respect and understand that for some people, fragrance is a concern. Fragrance does cause sensitivity. For me though, as someone who doesn't experience that, I love it. One thing to point out though, is that a lot of people hype up things like the Sol de Janeiro Bum Bum Cream, which has a really rich smell to it. And I understand that one doesn't go on the face so much as it does the body, but this this is a similar concept, so I don't know if it's just the fact that it's going on the face or it's like a celebrity skincare line or what that people are so in their feelings about, but that's something that did hit my mind the minute I smelled this. That tropical smell reminded me of the Sol de Janeiro Bum Bum Cream. So getting onto my usage of this and whatnot, when I use this, and here's the deal, in order to get the sun protection advertised on the front of a sunscreen packaging, which for this is SPF 30, you need to use roughly, and there's tests that go into factoring these numbers, roughly a quarter to a half teaspoon, that's gonna cover your face, your ears, and your neck. And that's a large amount, but it's covered a wide surface area and that averages to about four to five pumps for my face a pump for my ears front and back and then about i'd say four pumps for my neck front and back as well and that's just on initial application you do have to factor in reapplication as well which i'll get into in a second even using that much again as an oily acne prone individual i feel like it didn't cause any heaviness or greasiness in my skin it didn't cause any adverse reactions with pore clogging it sunk in so quickly and so nicely so even using such a generous amount I loved using this. With reapplication, I just focus on my face mainly. I did about four or five pumps in my hands. 
I went using the Fenty Beauty Precision Blending Sponge, which I like actually for reapplication because you have a flat edge and the round edge, which helps to get a lot of surface area with it. Went on beautifully on the makeup. You're seeing it and set again. This is just directly after reapplication with no extra powder on top. My makeup looks great. My skin looks great. So I genuinely actually had a great experience reapplying this. This might be a go-to for that. Looking at the product itself, it's eco-friendly. I talk about the packaging. The outside shell is plastic and recyclable. The inside refill is recyclable as well. Buying the whole thing again, brand new is 35 bucks. The refill itself by itself is still $30 though, and you're only getting 50 ml of product out of this. And again, this is the only moisturizer she released so far. So if I were to use the 10 pumps to apply to exposed areas, and that's just my neck, ears, and face. If you have anything else exposed, you should protect that as well chest included. So that 10 pumps for initial application plus reapplication plus if I were to use this at night for my night moisturizer, this would be gone in about 10 to 14 days. I could go through about three of these in a month probably. And I cover this more in my last Fenty Friday where I talk about my first week impressions as well. I'm not using this at night. That's why I really emphasize wanting a separate SPF just to be able to have a moisturizer for day and night skincare and then have a sunscreen just to use by itself. That all factored in makes this a really luxury high-end price point for me, which I don't like to recommend on my channel. Sunscreens for me are a necessity that need to be accessible and affordable to everyone just because they are a medical necessity. And having that high of a price point is A, gonna make people not want to buy it, but also B, if they do have it, not want to put on enough of it to get the proper protection from it. And if you're not putting on enough of this, you're not getting the proper protection that the product is advertising and you're basically wasting money in my opinion. So is this Ramon recommended? It's a 50-50 on that one. I've tried better sunscreens and mainly in that regard, I'm talking just about the sunscreen filters itself. Again, the three that this uses aren't the most stable, but that's just due to what the US is able to allow. Fenty had to work with what they could. So in that regard, I can't really ding them. But also this product burned my eyes. Pretty much every day I used it, I apply sunscreen liberally around my eyes because again, I'm trying to prevent sun aging and sun damage around those areas. You wanna apply liberally in those areas. It got in my eye every time. So in that regard, I wasn't a big fan of it. And that doesn't happen a lot with sunscreens. It actually happens very rarely. And again, it's really expensive for what it is. You don't get a lot of product out of it. And then the SPF itself is lower than I'd like to. SPF 30 is a lot lower than my SPF 50 plus that I normally wear. So those are the main cons for me that make this with the price point included not my favorite thing. But here's the deal with that. Rihanna came out with a sunscreen in her first launch, really highlighting the importance of it in the most basic of skincare routines. She really is hyping up the importance of wearing sunscreen no matter what your skin color is, no matter how old you are, no matter where you live, no matter what time of year. And in that regard, I really am going to celebrate that. Not only that, but the influence that Fenty and Rihanna have could actually get people to wear sunscreen regularly. So with all that said, is this your home recommended? I'm gonna lean more towards a yes. I loved using this. The smell of this was amazing. The feel and the texture of this was amazing. My experience overall with this, eye burning aside, was amazing. Price point's a little bit too high, but this is a really universal formula in terms of who can wear it in terms of skin diversity and skin color. It's a really fun experience to use. It's a higher price point than I'd like, but I really hope, again, this is a gateway to get people to wear sunscreen again. Rihanna made wearing sunscreen crazy, sexy, fun. So overall, I actually did like this. If you can get past the price point and the smell, Ramon recommended, 100%. So all that said, it's pretty Ramon recommended. It's not 100%, but it's definitely up there. So did you get a chance to try this? Let me know. What were your thoughts on it? What was your experience? Did you love it as much as I did? It's not my favorite in the Fenty Skin launch, but it's definitely up there. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and the notification bell so that you know when I post more sunscreen and Fenty related content. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.